Well, happening now is being called one of New Mexico's biggest storms in decades. We are still feeling the effects of that nasty weekend storm, and it will be a while before it is all cleaned up. News 13's Matt Morrow is in the Newsplex with the latest on this cleanup. Can't believe it was already a few days ago that we saw this storm out. Oh, without a doubt, you talk about that cleanup, Elizabeth. It is still going on. It'll probably still be going on for quite some time, and a lot of it has to do with all of this. Tons of trees that were snapped like toothpicks on Friday. The city and thousands of people who live here are still trying to clean up this mess. Some parks are a disaster. Schools look a little scattered and need to get cleaned up before teachers go back. That'll be next week. Street signs are still down, and a lot of street lights are still out. I've lived in this neighborhood for at least 25 years and in those 25 years we've never seen this much destruction all at one time. And that is a big mess. Now besides time it's also going to take a lot of money to clean all this up. The city of Albuquerque has already spent a million bucks doing that and that number could climb to one and a half million with most of it being spent on overtime for city crews and on private companies to help get rid of all those downed trees. The city is asking the federal government to help pitch in to pay for this. And some of the money the city is asking for is now coming from funds Governor Susana Martinez has freed up. She declared a state of emergency yesterday that gives cities all around the state a half million dollars that they can ask for to clean up what Mother Nature left behind. PNM crews have been able to restore power to about 99% of customers. There are still fewer, though, than 200 customers in the dark. No doubt it's been tough for these folks. Take 83 year old Lupita Henderson who has emphysema and asthma and needs an oxygen tank. If that tank isn't plugged in to, electric, to the electric, I, I don't get this oxygen in here and I don't breathe. It's either pay or breathe or not have the money and die. PNM says that they uh, try and respond to customers with special needs first. As for the power poles that snapped during the storm, or crews have fixed most of them. That's a good thing. We will have uh, continuing coverage on this. Stay with News 13 as we continue to cover the effects of this storm and any other that may pop up during monsoon season. Coming up on 534 now, the chairman of the Albuquerque Metro Crime Stoppers is, well, chairman no more, resigning after getting arrested on DWI charges. Pat Davis here. Police say rear-ended a car at Broadway and Cesar Chavez early Saturday morning. He denied drinking and told police the smell on his breath was mouthwash. But police say he later blew twice the legal limit. Davis was a lieutenant with UNM Police. He ran for Bernalillo County Sheriff back in 2010 and currently works for Progress Now New Mexico. It's a liberal activist group. He'd been on the Crime Stoppers board since 2008. Well, you can imagine a murder trial is not very cheap. No, and now we know exactly how much it costs to try and convict former APD cop Levi Chavez. Now, Chavez was found not guilty. Valencia County DA Lemuel Martinez says when you add up expenses and both prosecutors' salaries for the month and a half long trial, taxpayers shelled out about Forty-five grand, and that includes more than seven grand to house the prosecutors at a Bernalillo hotel for an entire length of the trial, and fourteen grand on expert witnesses. The taxpayers' money was not wasted. It went for a good cause. The outcome didn't happen as we all wanted, but nonetheless, it's not a waste because you can't put a price on a person's life. The DA's cost paled. Comp paled compared to the city of Albuquerque's cost when you include what the city paid to settle a civil lawsuit brought by Tara Chavez's parents. The city spent just shy of 820 grand in legal costs on the Chavez case. But again, for Levi Chavez, he was found not guilty of the crimes. The U.S. House could pass a bill which would lower rates for student loans any day now. The bill would link student loan interest rates to the financial markets and offer borrowers lower rates and soon, as soon as this fall. If the House approves the measure, it would then head to the president's desk just in time for the new school year. Well, UNM's University Stadium is starting to look a little different because the huge new video scoreboard is getting installed. Athletic Director Paul Kreb tweeted out this picture yesterday. The new scoreboard will be 32 feet high and 80 feet wide. It'll have the biggest video screen in the Mountain West. And the good news is what it'll look like when it'll be done. It should be ready to go for the guys to play their first home game. It's going to be on August 31st against Texas San Antonio. Well, school district here in New Mexico is talking about making the school year even longer. 
According to the Alamogordo Daily Times, that city school district is considering a year-round school, which would require 240 days of school instead of 162. Superintendent says the extra days will give kids more time to learn and give the district more time to see how well kids are doing. The district would have to get bonds to help pay for the extra costs, including utilities. Right now, the district is just talking about this change. It has not made a final decision on it just yet. Well, two car thieves in the Duke City thought they would go on a joyride to celebrate what they thought was an easy getaway, but uh, that went south pretty quickly, and the whole thing, yeah, it was caught on tape. Watch this. Uh, yeah, it started out with these two celebrating what they just thought they pulled off earlier this month near I-40 and Wants Bow, but their cheers soon turned into fears when they realized they were being followed and that this car might have come a little bit too easy. Oh my God, that's a cop. That's definitely a cop. Oh yeah, we're in a big car. Yeah, you are. Now you think that would be enough for them, but watch this. These guys weren't giving up that quickly. Police say Kyle Wall in there slides over into Killian BB's lap, leaving BB no choice but to move into the driver's seat with the car still moving the whole time. That didn't end well. The teams crashed into that garage that you just saw. That's some interrogation video from afterward. Police arrested them. They are each charged with car theft. All right, coming up on 538, the Pope is now speaking out and quite candidly, I might add, on everything from faith to his views on homosexuality. And his recent comments could symbolize his papacy. When asked about how he felt about homosexuality, he told reporters, quote, if someone is gay and he searches for the Lord, and has goodwill, who am I to judge? I don't think gay people in general have felt loved in this church for a long time, so to have any indication of being loved and being welcomed is huge. Now, while some are still skeptical about the Pope's comments, others are hoping this will help bring Catholics back to the church. Well, on a different note, if you like eating burritos without meat or chicken, new choices are on the way starting this week. Chipotle Mexican Grill will start offering more options for vegans. It's good news for you, Matt. You're a vegan. Customers on the West Coast, get this. They can already get tofu burritos and tacos. The rest of us will have to wait until they expand that menu across the nation. Yeah, like, like a little tofu. Yeah. Throw it in a burrito. It's pretty good. As long as it's cooked right, which I imagine Chipotle, Chipotle will cook it good. right. They cook yeah. everything else There's right. There's always just such a long line there. Uh, it goes pretty quickly, Ooh. though. You know, it's very deceiving. The line does move.